all right guys so welcome to another video in this case i'm going to be discussing the issues i am having with the k1 max as um most people i'm having issues with ringing um it appears that basically no matter what i do <clears throat> or it appear anyways the ringing for uh, basically any prints uh, but really mostly in regards to smaller prints uh, the printer is just generating way too many like um, artifacts uh, ringing ghosting whatever you want to call it no matter how many times I ran input shaper uh, checked out the graphs um, whatever it just kept giving me a lot of ringing I'm gonna show you an example of what I mean here so this is a print made out of PTG and if you can tell you can see those ripples there now this wouldn't be much of an issue if you couldn't feel them but if you run your finger around them and if, you, if I turn this over to the back it's quite a bit more noticeable and if you run your finger through them your nail you can actually feel those ripples so I've already reached out to Creality um, they basically told me you know it is what it is it's a high-speed printer uh, VFAs are not avoidable um, and whatever you know now I'm going to show you first um, I'm going to get to this in a second but I'm going to show you some things you can do to help minimize this um, and we're going to start with the rods themselves now in the maintenance guides it says to not lubricate your um, X rods, which would be the, these ones right here, but you are supposed to lubricate your Y rods, which would be those two on the sides. Um, based on some research and some um, Facebook support, as well with Creality support getting engaged, they actually do recommend that you lubricate the X rods, but they do not recommend you use the factory grease that comes with your K1, K1 Max, K1C, you're actually supposed to be using a thinner oil. So I've been using this one. So it's quite a bit thinner than the one that comes stock. And this is Super Lube. I um, don't know where the model number is or, but just look it up like this. It's silicone based. Uh, synthetic with PTFE whatever it works great I like it um, it's pretty thin and it looks like it's gonna run a long time so you can do that um, you can clean your your rods as you can tell mine are a bit greasy on the sides because of the oil uh, so you can clean them out really good and um, try some oil on your rods run input shaper and then run some prints and see how it see how it looks if it's still not working right then the next thing you probably want to do is tie in your your belts now the way you do this is you want to get your hot and centered like right around the middle you can actually find these um, little alignment tools that you can print out and they go They kind of go like this so there's one for each side there's the other one and you'll basically put one on each side and this will basically keep your um hotted into the center and then you will use um these little things which are kind of cool and you would put them like right there in the middle and um and it, it will show you like how far off you're off if they're like um if they're pointing um, let me see if I get this right if they're drooping downwards like this that means they're too loose and if it's like pointing upwards like this that means it's too tight so you want to the goal to this is to uh, print out of course a pair put them on each side like right around the middle and as you can tell mine are pretty much all right but 
Uh, the way to work is that you'll unscrew these two um, bolts, uh, little nuts right there, bolts. Those little screws right there. <laughs> chill out, chill out. And that would um, release the tension on this right here now. On your K1s, in your little bag of extra screws, you get two extra screws that you can actually put right there. And you can actually put the other one right in there. And if you tighten them down, it's going to cause your belt to loosen. And if you untighten them, it'll um, engage the spring. It'll pull the belts back and tighten them. Depending on how your situation is, you might have to get um, your Allen wrench and actually help it push in a little bit more to tighten it and get more tension. In my case, I didn't have to do that. I'd actu I actually had to um, um, loosen them a little bit. And um, in case you're wondering, um, in order them, in order for your um, um, your little screws to not bite into the plastic, you can put some washers right there, and it'll help. It'll help it from um, eating into the plastic there. But you'll basically do that until these two are um, like basically pointing upwards right there. So until you have that, and then you'll run the input shaper calibration again, do a quick test print, and then you'll move on to the next step. Now, if you're still having issues, there's still one more thing, well, maybe another two things you can do, but if you notice uh, that your motion system for the X is a little like um, hard or stiff, you can actually remove the cover, and in my case, a K1 Max, you have to remove the AI lighter and then remove the cover off. So you're going to remove these two screws if you have a K1 Max. If you have a K1, just a normal one, or a K1C, you'll remove the two screws on the side holding in the, the, the shroud. I'm going to show you where the springs are so you know. So give me a sec. So you want to make sure your printer's off just to make sure you don't damage anything now. How I remove this for the K1 is I would normally pull this cable out of the shroud because you'll have to remove it in order to pull the, the shroud off. But um, you don't want to do it just yet. You want to go ahead and remove these two screws holding in the shroud first. So you remove the two holding in the AI lighter and then you remove these two right here. Oh, I just lost a screw. Hold on. Okay, so once the shroud is loose, you'll notice that you can actually, uh, you have a little bit of a better clearance to remove this, then you can just pull that off. If you try to remove this, if it, if it's not loose, yeah, chances are is that the cable is going to snatch, like in, behind the plastic, and if you pull on it too hard, you're going to break it. Now, all you have to do is pull this up, pull the chain back, and then... Um, remove it like this and you can pull this off if you want yours might have glue so these would be the springs now mine are removed but basically you'll remove these two screws it's going to be this one and this one okay in my case, I stripped it. <laughs> In my case, the, the right one is stripped. So, yep. Be careful. Don't over tighten these. Tighten them, tighten them just with the long end. And don't get the, the strong end and, and like tighten it down. Because you will strip them really easily. But where that hole is right there. Where that, there's a spring here. So, there's two springs like this there's one in each hole and basically their purpose is to um, push up against the the um, graphite bushing for the x-axis um, however in some cases this causes it to have more drag like it pushes it up on one 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 side of it and a lot of users report extra drag on their on their um motion system so removing this 
uh, springs will re release like that extra tension, I guess, or drag. And then when you run the auto, sh the auto, the um, the uh, input shaper again, chances are you might have way better results. In my case, it didn't really do much, and um, even though it is a lot smoother, but I didn't really notice much of a difference. So, but in your case, it might show a difference just like other users reported. Now, I might be picky and I might not be printing right, but I wanna show you um, one more thing I did as well that is kinda of getting this under control and this might help you out, especially on the K1 Max. So the K1 Max, you know, it's a large build, uh, it's a large format machine. So I don't think its purpose is to print small things such as like these little um, GoPro uh, chin mounts. Its purpose, I think, is to print larger things. So I guess the way it calibrates input shaper is for higher speeds. Um, I'm talking maybe 150 millimeters or higher. So if you're still having issues with ringing um, and you've already done all of this, then the next thing you have to do and this is also after you've calibrated your flow and your temperature tuning and everything like that. So you would want to run a VFA test, which is like this. If you have Orca Slicer, Bamboo Slicer, these are pre-configured files that you can just um, go to the configuration or the um, whatever thing it's called here, I'll show you in a sec. So it would be up here uh, on calibration, more and then VFA. Now the way I run it is from a initial speed of 50 and with a final speed of 600 with increments of 50. Now this is going to generate the following file which is going to be this right here. So as you can tell it's going to start at a 50 millimeters per second print speed and then go up to 100, 150 um, all the way to um, 650, I think. Eh, it'll work, just print it out. So this will test, um, well, it would, of course, test how fast you can print, but it would also test out at what specific speed those ringing artifacts show. So in my case, let's go back to the printer and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the test print. And if you can tell there on the first two to three, so the first is 50 millimeters per second, you can see a lot of that ringing there. And then all the way to 100, and then it clears at 150. So anything I print at over 150, it's going to have less ringing. <clears throat> so you can tell there. So remember, the first one is... Um, I can, uh... Sorry, so remember that the first one, hopefully this ringing shows up. I have to get it to the light, but remember it's like around these little um, grooves right there. Anything under that is 50, then 100, 150, all the way to 600-ish. So what you have to do is find at what speed those vibrations end. So in my case, it's just over 150. So now that you've found at what speed your uh, VFA show up, then of course you'll have to, in order to avoid ringing, you will need to print at that specific speed. So this will require for you to tune your speeds on the slicer. You might wanna decrease your cooling layer times. So by default, I believe it's at eight, uh, seconds per layer I believe you might want to drop that to around five maybe four or three um, and then whenever you're gonna print something we're gonna go back to the slicer for example in this case if I think something's wrong hold on let me just go back to my normal settings okay so it seems about right ish so let me just double check something hold on I think I had mine to 12. Thing else seems okay. Cooling speed, I believe I had dropped that to six. 
So as you can tell, um, the first few layers are going to be printed at around 50 millimeters per second. So that's where most of the VFAs are going to show up the ringing. So there's really nothing I can really do about this other than to reduce the uh, layer cooling times a little bit more. But in this case, uh, if I want to avoid the ringing as much as possible, then I have to basically have something bigger to print or in this case multiples of the same thing in order for the um, speed to be faster between all of those objects so for example if i clone this object let's say i want to print four of them and then i slice it uh, oh crap hold on let me restart my slicer this is something's weird okay so let's start over so going back to what i was saying so in this case if i were to print just one of these uh, little chin mounts here um, this is about the speed I would be printing at. It's around 50 to maybe 76 millimeters per second. And based on this, the uh, VFA test we ran, that's where most of the ringing is going to show up. So in order, since this object is obviously too small to be printed faster without having, you know, with it having the quality um, issues, um, uh, what we're going to have to do is, you know, clone it around four times because basically what we want to do is we want to have a, a larger um, of one thing or, or, or multiples of one thing so that we can print faster in between layers for each object um, and this is what it's going to show like so as you can tell here it's no longer printing at 50 to 76 millimeters per second it's now printing at around 161 millimeters per second per layer which is going to reduce um, the VFAs, the ringing, ghosting, because on the test we ran, everything under over 150 millimeters per second, that's when the ringing is going to disappear most. So I do have multiples of these printed out. So I want to show you real quick how it looks like um, over on the printer now. So these, so let's ignore the, the crap here for a second here, but want to recap real quick. This is how it looks like when I print only just one okay and this is printed again between 50 to 80 millimeters per second and this one right here i printed six so it was right there and i printed those six so it has enough time to cool each layer but also print faster between all of these here in between so these were printed at around over 150 millimeters per second so if you can tell the ringing is just about gone you can still see it but it's not as bad as this, where you can actually see those ripples in a closer pattern. And I'm gonna show you the back, because the back is where it really shines. Look at all of that ringing right there. Now let's sh I'm gonna show you the back of the one that was printed in a batch. And it's almost perfect. You can still see ringing there, but it's a lot better than and I dropped it. It's a lot better than this, I would say. This one was printed in ABS, and look at that ringing. So let me just grab another one real quick, and the ringing is... It's, it's not gone, but it's way less visible. It's a lot smoother. If I run my finger, I can't feel it. <clears throat> like, I cannot feel those ripples. If I run my finger on this, Hopefully you can hear that. You can actually feel those ripples with your fingernail. But yeah, so far this machine has been a pain in my butt, honestly. Um, if I could recommend uh, you to get it, if you're going to be printing large things, then yeah, I think it's worth it. But if um, you were trying to print smaller things, then you probably want to go and get a smaller printer maybe the k1 or the v3 if you're only stuck with creality but creality they really do fix the input shaper because i don't think it's right that you can't print small things and trust me i've spent over maybe 20 hours on this printer just fiddling with it and maybe not even 20 probably even more than that because every time i would come back from work i'm like all right like, I'm going to fiddle with this machine even more. It's, it's become a chore, to be honest. 
Um, but yeah, I believe there's other users who, there's uh, a lot of users that have the same issue, but there's others that don't have the same experience. So um, one thing that I did mention to Creality is that my rods, they feel, they look like a little, like they're, they've been scuffed by the graphite bushings. Um, also, I did want to test um, that maybe I had a bad breakout board. Maybe I was thinking the sensor was damaged or something, but I did replace them. Did get a board. I actually tried <laughs> three boards already, but it's the exact same issue. I even changed the hot end to one of these uh, Triangle App clones. This actually did help reduce the vibrations just very slightly, but I don't think it's worth upgrade over the stock one unless you can get them for cheap. These clone ones are like 10 maybe $15. So they're pretty cheap. They're pretty reliable because I have one on my S1 Pro. So I know for a fact they're pretty reliable, and it's been printing pretty well so far. But anyways, this is what I wanted to share. Um... If you have uh, something that maybe you did differently that reduced vibrations at slow speeds, let me know. I'd love to find out how you did it and how you solved it. But anyways, uh, this was my two cents on this experience for the K1 so far. Uh, final thoughts. This is something I'd recommend to new users. No, not at all. New users should definitely be going... Um, Maybe a, a, a bet, a bet is probably less of a chore than this one here. And uh, probably just go with Bamboo Labs if you have the availability. But no, I would not recommend this machine. The support has not been great. Um, they basically said that's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so deal with it. Um, even when um, the... Also, one of the reasons I forgot to mention is the reason that I bought these is because... Um, the temperature sensor for the hot end, it broke. It was not reading the temperature right. It was reading like at two, like 135, even when it was cold. Uh, they didn't even offer to send me a replacement one. So these are pretty cheap. They're like $10, $20 on AliExpress. But still, they could have at least offered to, you know, send me a replacement unit for it or, or something. But, but no, um... So I'm pretty disappointed on the quality support for this machine. Honestly, this machine probably shouldn't be on sale um, or should not be targeted for new, for like newbie users. It should be targeted for experienced users who know, you know what they know, what they know how to, they know what to do if something goes wrong and something will go wrong with these machines, honestly. Um, but yeah, that, that's my rant. Um, other than that, well, once you figure it out and you calibrate it, it's not too bad, but prepare to spend several hours on this machine if you're, if even if you're like experienced with 3D printers. But yeah, um, there's something else I can try. If you have any recommendations, um, let me know. It's been quite a journey with this one. So, see you guys.